Welcome back everyone. In this video, we will learn about using the vModel directive on a custom component. This concept is better understood with an example, so let's dive into the code straight away. We have the app component with an empty template and an empty data object. Let's begin by adding an input element for the user to enter their name. So define a data property called name, initialize to an empty string and in the template add an input element. Input type is equal to text. To bind the name data property to the input, we use the vModel directive. So vModel is equal to name. vModel is a directive we learned quite a few videos ago, so it should be familiar to you by now. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, we should have our input element. I can type in a name and this should be stored in the name data property of the app component. Now to verify that, we are going to use the view dev tools. The view dev tools, amongst many things, allows us to check the values of the various data properties in a component. I highly recommend you install the view dev tools for view 3 which is currently in the beta version. Again, it is really useful from a development point of view. As you can see, I have already added it to Chrome. If I go back to localhost 8080, we should see view is enabled on this site and have a tab corresponding to view in the Chrome dev tools. If I click on the view tab, we should see the component tree for our application. At the moment, we just have the one component, which is app component. But down here, you can see the data properties corresponding to the app component. We have one property called name, which is set to Vishwas. If I update the input, the same is reflected here. So this is a way to check the data properties in your component at any given time. Now the reason we looked at an example with the vModel directive is because often you might create form components to be used throughout your application. For example, the HTML input element by default isn't well styled. So you might want to create an input element with your own styles and reuse that input component throughout your application. In such scenarios, you'll have to add some logic to ensure the vModel directive works as expected. Let's head back to VS Code and create an input component. In the components folder, create a new file called input.view. Within the file, use the vBase snippet to populate the code. Let's name this component as input. In the template, let's add an input element. Input type is equal to text. In the style block, let's add some styles to the input element. To save us some time, I'm going to copy paste the styles. Our custom component is now ready. Let's include it in app component. Import input from components slash input dot view and then add it to the list of components. Now instead of using this default HTML input, let's use our customized input component and try to bind the name property. Input vModel is equal to name. If you now save the file and head back to the browser, you can see that our input element is displayed with the custom styling that we have applied. If we start typing in a name though, you can see that the data property is not updated with the value. And this is because the vModel directive doesn't know how to behave with a custom component. It is our responsibility to define that. But you don't have to worry as it is pretty straightforward. And that is exactly what we are going to learn. Let's head back to the input component and make the changes. 
When we use the vModel directive on a custom component, it automatically receives a prop called model value, which we need to specify in the props option. So after name, props, model value of type string. Next, we need to bind this prop to the value attribute of the input element. So we use the vbind directive shorthand to bind to the value property of the input. So value is equal to model value. Now this takes care of the value of the input, but we still need to handle the input from the user. Here again, view helps us out. When we use the vModel directive on a custom component, it automatically listens to an event called update colon model value. All we have to do is emit that event with the input value. So on the input element, we bind to the input event and emit the update colon model value event. The data we pass to the parent is $event.target.value, which is the input element value. If we now save the file, go back to the browser and enter a name, the same is reflected in view dev tools. Our custom input component works as expected. When building custom form components, handling the model value prop and the update model value event is something you're going to have to manage. And this is pretty much how you do it. All right, with that, we come to the end of our discussion about component events in Vue. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.